Okay, on this video we're going to go over reading graphs. And this graph right here gives the relationship between your PO2 level. Your PO2 means your um, partial pressure of oxygen uh, compared to your percent saturation of hemoglobin. Now it doesn't matter what these variables are about. These could be about the number of years that, that uh, you've been alive and maybe this might be uh, the number of miles that you've driven. But there's a relationship between two variables. This is usually considered the x-axis and that's the independent variable and this axis is the y-axis and that's the dependent variable. But hopefully you can read these graphs but let's go over some of these. Down below it gives you some uh, questions to ask and uh, these should be in your book and let's just go ahead and go over these. Uh, it wants us to complete the table and it's asking us our percent satura saturation of hemoglobin if your partial pressure of oxygen, your PO2 level, is at 20. Well, all we do is we go out here to 20 and then we go straight up. This little dotted line is showing you that goes straight up and then just read across to see how high it is. Well, I would estimate that to be about 35. So when your PO2 level is 20, your percent saturation of hemoglobin, your Y value, is 35. Uh, what is your percent saturation of hemoglobin when your X value is 40? Same thing. Uh, when your PO2 level is 40, just go straight up. And then when you hit the graph, you go straight across, and that would approximately be 75. And another one, how about when it's 80? Well, when your PO2 level is 80, that's your X value is 80, we would go up, hit the graph, and go straight across, and we are just estimating here, but that might be 95 or so, something like that. Okay, now it could give you the opposite. Uh, let's say that it gave you the percent saturation of hemoglobin, the Y value, and you're supposed to figure out uh, the approximate PO2 level. So, for example, let's say it said that the it wants to know the PO2 level when your percent saturation of hemoglobin is 30. So we would go up to 30 right here, right where that 30 is, that hash mark, go straight across. It would take us right about here, and then drop down. Might take us to about 17 or so. And again, this is just roughing it in, but this is making sure you know how to read a graph. Let's say the uh, percent saturation of hemoglobin is 50. We go up to 50, go across, come straight down, and that would approximate our level of uh, our PO2 level, our X value. So it'd be close to 30. And how about if your uh, percent saturation of hemoglobin was 70? Well, we go up to 70. Go straight across till we hit the graph, and then come straight down, and maybe that might be 37 or something like that. Okay. This graph shows uh, the PO2 and percent saturation level for pe uh, people with different blood pH levels. So, for example, in dark, black shaded line is the uh, percent saturation of hemoglobin for somebody that has a pH level of 7.4 or a high blood pH level. A medium uh, blood pH level of 7.1 is graphed in red, and the low blood pH level of 6.8 is graphed in blue. So a question might say, using these uh, graphs above, if three people have the same PO2 level, okay, same X value, uh, but one has low blood pH, that's in blue, one has normal blood pH, that's in red, and the other one has high blood pH, that's in black, which has the highest percent saturation of, hemo of, uh, percent saturation of hemoglobin. That's this percent saturation right here. Well, we can see that the one that has the highest value the whole time is this black line is higher than the red or blue line for, uh, well, it's a curve actually, is higher than the red or blue curve the whole distance. And that would be the black graph. And what is that? That's people with a high blood pH. So if you have high blood pH, pH level, then you have a high percentage of saturation of hemoglobin. Uh, in other words, you get more out of the oxygen that you breathe in, which is a good thing. And that's how you would read this graph. Um, and then we would could read the different people at different levels. Like if a person has a PO2 level of 30, that's this, a 30, then uh, and has normal blood pH, estimate their percent saturation of hemoglobin. Okay, normal is the red graph. So we'd go up to here and then go across and we see that that's 40. Now if they have low uh, pH level, that's the blue, we go at 30, go up, and what's their PO, uh, their percent saturation level if their PO2 is 30? 
go right to here. When they hit that graph right there, it's just a little bit above 25, so maybe about 26 or so. See, we went up to about, we went at 30, went straight up to the blue graph, which is a little bit higher than this um, spot right here at 25. It's a little bit higher when you go across. It's a little bit higher than 25. And if it was uh, somebody with high blood pH, then we would go up to here and go across, and that would be about at 55 or so. Some graphs do go negative, however, so you got to be prepared for that. For example, this graph shows a graph that goes from negative 6, which is unhealthy passivity. Uh, it, this particular problem is about somebody uh, controlling their aggression. Here is a uh, healthy person, which is assertive, not afraid to ask questions, and uh, will do that type of thing, but is not a uh, assertive, uh, aggressive type of person. Uh, now, the higher you go, the more aggressive you are. And the lower you go, the more passive you are, the more likely you are to sit in class and have a question and not be willing to ask that question. So the healthier it would be to have a value of zero. And positive y values would go up, and negative y values would go down. Now you can think of a person in their life kind of changing. Maybe when they're young, they're kind of afraid to raise their hand and ask questions. So when they're young, they would have a low uh, level. They would be uh, have a level of passivity, which means they would just sit there and not ask questions. Then maybe as they get older, they become more mature and they go, as this is thinking of the x-axis going across here as time, I'm thinking as you get older, maybe you get more to a healthy uh, level where you're willing to ask questions but not be a, aggressive and start fights or anything. Well, maybe at a certain age that might happen, that you might go the extreme. Well, then you'd be up into the positive area, and then maybe at time it might drop back down lower, and so on. So if somebody goes through phases where they're, they're going from unhealthy passivity, which is a negative area, to unhealthy aggression over a period of time, then what would happen is you would get somebody that has their, their downs and their ups in this area. And, uh, but that's just showing you that a graph can go negative. This graph shows the lung volume in milliliters, and you can think of this as being time, this axis going across here. So here's somebody taking little breaths, breathing in and out, big breath out, then a big breath in, and then they do it again, and so on. And somebody may ask, what is the maximum uh, lung volume in milliliters? Well, the maximum is going to be these peak values up here, which look like it's a little bit higher than 5,000, maybe 5,500 or so. We're just estimating here. You might ask, what is the lowest or the minimum lung volume? Well, that would be down here, these minimum values where, where it bottomed out. And that would probably be about 1,500, maybe somewhere around that. But we're looking at the right pl places here, hopefully. And uh, if somebody ever asks, uh, what is your vital capacity? On this, well, it shows vital capacity goes from here about 5,500 down to here about 1,500. So if you subtract those, that gives you the distance in between. 5,500 minus 1,500 would be about 4,000. So that's how you could get any of these distances in between here by subtracting the higher minus the lower. It's worth it to mention here that uh, the lung volume is measured in milliliters, and so 5,000 milliliters would equal five liters. So if it asks what's the uh, maximum in liters, it would be about 5.5 liters. So that's uh, because there's a thousand milliliters in a liter. A milliliter is also equal to a cubic centimeter. So there are 5,000, or see in the, the top here, maximum is about 5,500. So that'd be 5,500 milliliters or 5,500 cubic centimeters or cc's, which is equal to 5.5 liters. Just move your decimal point three places to the left to convert from uh, liters to milliliters or from milliliters to liters. We'll take a look at this graph and uh, other graphs on the next video.